Hello students, your instructor here again, John Mandula with another screencast, this one finishing up the study guide for audio. Uh, we left off in MIDI, got a little bit cut off, all I really wanted to say left on this is because it's really small file size, and it's small because it's a set of instructions. Um, it's common that it'll be in cell phones for like built-in ringtones or alert tones and things like that, alarm clock tones, things like that. Obviously if your ringtone is a song, it's not a MIDI, it's going to be an MP3 or some other uh, musical file format. Okay, audio editing software, Sound Booth, that's what we use in class. Uh, some great things about it, it has royalty free scores of music that you can use. Uh, you can adjust audio effects to make it sound really grungy and staticky or make it sound echo or whatever. You can record with it, just one or two clicks, and you can start recording um, as long as you have some kind of microphone built in or attached to the computer. And round trip editing with After Effects and Premiere Pro. What that means is if I'm in After Effects or Premiere Pro and I have placed a sound, that I've edited in Sound Booth, placed it in there, and I decide that eh, this part of the sound I need to go a lot higher pitched. I can one or two clicks, boom, I'm back in Sound Booth, editing that sound, making the changes I need to make, save it, and it goes right back into Premiere Pro seamlessly. I don't have to reinsert it or retrim it or whatever, it just goes right back in seamlessly. So that's what round trip editing is all about. Audacity, so this is a piece of freeware. Um, open source freeware, so not only is it free, but uh, you can edit the code if you know how to do that and want to make changes to the software and redistribute it. Um, it has recording capabilities just like Soundbooth does, and it can import and export multiple file formats, which Soundbooth can too, but it's, it's worth noting for an open source piece of software as um, they're not always as flexible as some of the big boy uh, professional pieces. And lastly, audio and flash. So among the various audio types that Flash can accept, can import, is MP3, WAV, and AIFF, which is nice. Um, and Flash, when it imports a sound, it wraps into kind of an invisible envelope for editing. Uh, speaking of editing, you can do simple things, not very high-tech things, like fade in, fade out. You can adjust the start and end points. You can have a 10-second piece of sound. You can have it played just the, f the first three seconds, or what have you. Um, worth noting that the editing occurs to the envelope, not the sound itself. So you're, you're not actually harming the sound. If you make changes to it, you can just delete it and reinsert that sound or that audio file, and you'll be starting from scratch. So just editing the envelope, not the sound itself. And synchronization. So uh, audio can be placed on the timeline and be synced up with animation. Um, for example, you know, if you have a car going across the screen, you can have car sound on the timeline and a layer right below it. Also be synced with events, and by events I mean things like buttons or other interactive things that a user might have mouse over or drag and drop or whatever. Uh, uh, so that's what sound, how it can be synced up in Flash. So that's it. That's the end of your study guide. And enjoy.